One of the best feelings you can have as a tennis player is be able to walk up to the line and control the ball and put it in the box anywhere you want in the box. Place it anywhere, but just not any kind of serve. I'm talking about the ability to serve the curve. My favorite serve, which is the slice serve. So we're in the middle of a promotion. Uh, if you're not on my email list, I still wanted to share it with my YouTube followers to where we're doing the serve the curve train program to where you can either train by yourself, you can train in person with me, or you can even train with me virtually where you can send me uh, up to four videos a month. It's called Next Level University. But I want to share this video with you today, which will teach you how to not only just get massive amount of slice on your serve, but also be able to use it with pinpoint accuracy so the deck is stacked up uh, against your opponent. So whether you want to serve out wide to the fence, whether you want to serve into their body, whether you want to go up the tee with a slice, it's heads you win, tails they lose. Enjoy today's video. Hey guys, this is Pete and welcome back to part two of three of my slice serve, my nasty slice serve uh, video series for you, teaching you how to really, first of all, in video one, we showed you how you can develop nasty slice. In this video today, we're gonna show you how you can actually start to control this slice so you can have pinpoint accuracy. And in video three, I'm gonna show you five hot spots that you want to master for your slice serve. Plus, we're gonna introduce you to that kick serve. So let's get started. What is the big thing I see people doing wrong on the slice serve? I think the biggest thing, we got two paths you can follow and most people follow the wrong path. Path one is trying to aim directly at that box with your slice. And so you can see here, we start out with the green and we go into the blue, yellow, green. And this is what happens if you aim directly for their target. This is usually where the ball goes. This happened to me. Now, if you're a righty, same thing happens to you over on the deuce side. So, but you're right, you're going, you're aiming right for that box and then you go to hit and your slice serve goes way off the court. And people struggle with this for a long time and they can't figure out what's happening. Well, if you especially were changing from the frying pan grip and you're starting to learn that continental grip and you're learning how to eventually get slice or kick on it, you have to change the way you aim. You can no longer aim right at your box. You see I'm aiming right at my box and we hit the camera again. That poor camera is really going through it in this video series for you guys. But uh, anyway, you see I went right there and the ball went directly forward. Well, if I take that same swing with the continental grip and I go to aim right at that area, well, look what happens. I'm going way off the beaten path there. So what you want to think about is boomeranging your slice in there. So I'm actually, as I'm hitting this ball, I'm picturing it going out that way first and then eventually it trails back in. Look how as it's going over the middle strap where it eventually ends up way off the court. So I'm picturing my ball going over the middle strap and then getting way off the court eventually. So when I think like that, my body's gonna start to do some important things I'm gonna walk you through after I just do a couple of demos. So here I go, I'm aiming out first and then around. You see that? We, we make that ball spin out and around. Look at that ball hook in, right out and around. So you can see those balls slicing off the court really nice. So how am I doing that out and around move? First of all, I think about really pointing my shoulders to this net strap, maybe even more to the other court there. I don't know if the other court's in our camera, but really being very exaggerative with my shoulders going this way, this front shoulder, my right shoulder pointing out that way and keeping that there a long time. That's gonna help it eventually corral right in there because if I open the shoulder too early, I'm gonna miss wide. So I think besides just how you're swinging and thinking, most people, when they go to hit that slicer, because they're used to having this frying pan grip, and even if you open your shoulders up early, you can still put the ball right in the box. But if I open my shoulders up too early here, and I have slice on it, it's gonna go way out there. So I really hold my shoulders, and I do what I call the tuck. After I hit, look how long I'm gonna stay towards you guys, 
but really cut around the ball and it eventually travels in the box there. See that? See, see how I've, man, that ball was wet. It was kind of cool. I got like a little uh, shower on my head. I don't know if you guys can see that. But look at the tuck there. So I go out here, come around that ball and tuck and you can really see those balls moving way off the court, but it's happening, happening gradually. Look at that one. That was nasty. That was nasty. We got to put that one in super slow-mo. But it's because I'm just focused on the travel and coming out there. So do that drill also inside my course, which I have a course, uh, Slicer Mastery. We show you even more drills on how you can get the control over the ball because that's so important. But I just want you to change your mindset of how you're aiming and that's gonna go a long way. So that was video two. We're gonna come back with video three. We're gonna show you five hot spots. Plus we're gonna introduce that kick serve to you. Um, and I can't wait to see on video three.